roll back the curtain here a little bit. You know, as we shot last week's video, I hope, one, I hope you really enjoyed that, but, but two, I left, I left afterwards kind of feeling defeated. You, may, you can't really tell from watching the video because, you know, Sarah Mackay did such a good job uh, editing it. But it was a struggle for me to get through it. And when I left, I mean, I struggled with how, it, how I thought it was going to come out. Now, you've seen the finished product. I saw the finished product, and it, it turned out really well. We've gotten some really good feedback. So those that have given us feedback, thank you for that. Really appreciate that. But when I left, man, I felt so defeated. I felt like, man, I need to apologize for the way I, I, I went about this. But then I, I saw what had come from it. And I saw what, what actually was produced. And I realized that it was the enemy trying to come in and steal my joy, trying to kill my purpose, and trying to destroy what we're trying to do with these Mental Health Monday videos. And so as I rolled this back, I just kind of wanted to share that, you know, we're going through some stuff that the enemy doesn't want us to break through. He wants to hold us captive. He wants to keep us here. And that includes your pastors, your leaders, you know, your, uh, your mentors. We're all struggling with this. And I think, you know, if you're like me, you've recognized this in yourself and you've recognized this in others. And so with that, I just want you to keep in mind one word, and that's grace. We hear, we talk about grace all the time. We talk about having grace for one another. We talk about having grace for our neighbor. But do we really show grace to ourselves? Do we really, how, how well are we showing grace to ourselves? Do we give ourselves the same grace that we give others? And I want you to remember that because as we go through this, as you start to deal with some of these issues that you've been carrying for a long time, and I'm assuming that because I'm carrying them and we all carry them. We all have issues. We all have stories. We all have backgrounds that bring us to where we're at today. And we have to deal with some of those issues, some of those, those hurts, those hangups that, are, that have kept us captive, that have kept our, our mental health you know, suffering, that have kept us spiritually weak or emotionally uh, placid. We need to understand this. We're, we face these things. The enemy is going to want to attack. And so have grace for yourself. And know that despite what you might have been told, despite what popular belief might be, it is okay to not be okay. You don't have to have your stuff together. As a Christian, we're told that grace abounds that we're accepted where we're at, that while we're still sinners, Christ loved and died for us. So it's okay. God knows that we're in process. God knows that we're in a journey. And God knows that he wants to walk with us step by step by step. And that step is to perfection. See, we're perfected by his, by his grace, by his healing, by what was accomplished on the cross. But our life is a journey to that perfection that we get in heaven. So with that understanding, you need to know that you're not going to have it all together. And that as you deal with your issues, many of these issues you've carried since you were a young child. Some of them could be generational. But these are things that become so normalized in who you are, in the way you go about things. We talked about with redecorating the house. We have some things that are in the house of our lives that have been there for generations. They're heirlooms. But those heirlooms are actually things that are, that are holding us captive. They haven't trapped us. And when we clean house, we need to learn how to walk in those new ways. We need to learn how to live in a house that's been redecorated. And when you do that, you can't expect that you're going to be successful immediately, that you're going to be perfected immediately. You're going to stumble. You're going to screw up. You're going to feel like, man, I took two steps forward this week, and the following week you're going to feel like you took two steps back. And that's to be expected. 
Have grace for that process. Have grace for yourself as you go through it. You know, understand that as you're working through it, you're learning as you fail. You know, I find it interesting as I went through my, my first years of undergrad, learning about through Hebraic studies, that really in the Jewish culture, in that mindset, you could be a multi-multi-millionaire. You could be the richest person in the world. But if you have not failed twice, you are not viewed as a success. Because in that Jewish understanding, that Hebraic teaching that we get our Bible from, it is understood that failure is going to happen. And that failure more than success has a way of teaching us and growing us and maturing us and helping us achieve the things that we've set out to achieve. And as you're stepping out to achieve more freedom, more clarity, uh, life more abundantly that we're promised, you're going to have struggles. You're going to have failures. But you need to have the perspective that it's a learning opportunity. That it's not something that you just give up. It's not something that, that you just say, well, you know what, I, I tried it was, it was great while it lasted, but you know what? I just can't do it. It's too hard. That, that's, that's not acceptable. See, it's, it's okay to fall. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to make mistakes. What's not okay is to stay down. What's not okay is to give up. What's not okay is to turn back to the way things were before. As we talked about last week in our video, if you do that, it's going to be worse than the way it was before. Those things that you had thought you'd overcome as you return to the way things were, that problem is going to bring seven more with it. And you're going to be far more worse off than you were before. So since you've started this process, you need to continue pushing forward. You know, scripture tells us, see, Paul understood that, that we're not going to be completely perfected, that we're going to have struggles. And that even in the midst of our struggles, that we're still to walk forward, still to pursue God, still to allow Him to perfect us. And he talks about having a thorn in His flesh. You know, that thorn in His flesh could have been a, a physical ailment. It could have been a, an emotional trauma. It could have been relational. We don't fully know. We have ideas of what it could have been. We think it was a physical ailment. But point being... There are things in our life that we're going to struggle with, but that's not an excuse for us to stop or to give up or to not or to turn back. We are to keep pushing forward. And a great reminder of this is found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And it says this, if you want to follow along, it says this, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I want you to look at, it says it's the perfecter of our faith. If we're already perfect, if things were already smooth, we wouldn't need a perfecter of our faith. We wouldn't need a perfecter of our life. If we were able to push aside all hindrance on our own, we wouldn't need Christ. And it wouldn't say this, that let us push that aside and pursue. Let us run with endurance. If it was easy, we wouldn't need endurance. This life is a struggle. This path to healing, purpose, promise, prosperity, freedom that we all are looking for is one that is full of potholes, full of hindrances, full of things that we need to overcome. And because it is a struggle, it's not a smooth road. It's a road full of potholes and, and ditches. Because of that, we need to understand that we're going to trip sometimes in those holes. We're going to stumble. But we need to pick ourselves up. We need to continue moving forward. We can't use the excuse of it being hard to give up. Because the things in life that are worth the most are things that we have to work for the most. The things that, that we struggle for, 
the things that we put our effort into, that's where our treasure is. So let me, let me just remind you, have grace for yourself. Let grace abound and do not give up. If you need, you know, you need help with this, feel free to reach out. You want to come in and, and you're dealing with some stuff and you want some guidance, feel free to reach out. Come in. Let's sit down and talk. If you have a mentor, sit down with your mentor. Talk with them. Talk it through. Relationship, everything happens in the context of relationship. So if this is, is hitting home, please let us know. We, we really appreciate your feedback. We want to be able to help you where you're at. We want to be able to take you from, from where you're at to where you want to be. And so your feedback is really the only way we can do that. Whether you comment on this video or you, you email it, you send an email to the church or to, to someone involved with this project, you know, or, or you just word of mouth. We need to get the word out. Um, you know, thank you for this. But let us know so we can, so we can help you. you know, thank you for, for listening to this. And tune in next week for our next video. Uh, you won't want to miss it. Mm -hmm.